Welcome to another video. Let's do some linear algebra in this video. We want to talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Now, to help you understand what we're about to do, let's understand the prefix eigen. It's, it's a German word. You, you can always hear the sound. The word eigen is the word that you would translate own. So if I say this is my own house, it means it only belongs to me. So every matrix has its own value. That value it has is what we call the eigenvalue of the matrix. And every matrix has its own unique vector. That unique vector is what we call its eigenvector. It's just German word, its own vector, its own value, which means Instead of you multiplying something by the entire matrix, as you see here, you could as well not use the matrix, just multiply by the eigenvalue. So the eigenvalue would do the same thing the entire giant matrix would do, but it would only do it to its own eigenvector. So it won't do it to just any random vector you pick anywhere. So if you wanna do any transformation using a matrix, you could transform that vector if only you're using the eigenvalue of that matrix and you're using the corresponding eigenvector. Let's get into the video. Let's start this by looking at this equation. A V is equal to lambda V. A is a matrix, V is a vector, but lambda is a scalar, it's just a number. And this is a vector. Let's say we wanna try and solve an equation. Watch what's gonna happen. We're gonna say that A V equals lambda V. Let's move everything to one side. We've got A V minus lambda V equals zero. Now watch this. Let's factor out the v. a minus lambda times v is equal to zero. Now this looks fantastic, but it's meaningless. It is stupid. Why is it stupid? Because you cannot subtract a number from a matrix. No. This is what a matrix looks like. So it's like saying this minus two. See, you cannot subtract anything from a matrix unless the other thing is also a matrix. So we cannot work with this. The only way we can work with this is if we make this also a matrix. And there's a quick manipulation we can make. What if we multiply it by the one of matrices? The one of matrices is the identity matrix. Remember, it is that matrix that just has one here, has zero here, has zero here, has one here. Now, when you multiply this by this, you have put the two in the correct positions. So this actually is a good manipulation. So we can go back to this original equation and say that this is equivalent, let me just put it this way, to AV is equal to lambda I. V. You see this I doesn't change anything in matrices because it's the identity, it's like multiplying something by one. So instead of us using this equation that I wrote here, this is what we're gonna use so we can do this subtraction. So now we've got AV equals lambda IV. Let's continue. What are we gonna have? We're gonna say that AV minus lambda I um, V equals zero, we can factor out the V and say A minus lambda I times V is equal to zero. Okay. Now, you know how we, we can actually get our V because if we get our V, all we have to do is find the inverse of this matrix and use it to divide zero. But if we're able to do that, so look, if a minus lambda i is invertible. If we can find the inverse of this, then what we can do 
is we're going to use the inverse of this to multiply this side and multiply this side and we're going to end up with v will be equal to 0 times a minus lambda i inverse and what would this be this would be equal to 0 but the eigen vector of any matrix can never be the zero matrix. So you can't have the zero matrix as an eigenvector. So the, the only way what we just did it is meaningful is if this is not invertible, if this is not invertible, then the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. And that is our key to finding the eigenvector and the eigenvalue. So, since this is not invertible, okay, I already explained why, then the determinant of this matrix is zero. That's the meaning of not invertible. The determinant of a matrix is equal to zero if the matrix is not invertible. Or a matrix is not invertible if the determinant is equal to zero. So we know that the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. And that's it. So let's begin our calculation to find what this is going to be. So look, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have the determinant of, firstly, let's find a minus delta, a minus lambda i. So a, what is a? So we have um, this matrix. It's going to be 1 minus 1, 2, 4. Minus lambda times i. What is i? i is 1, 0, 0, 1. We're saying that this is going to have a determinant that is equal to zero. Okay, well, this is the determinant of one, let's put this together, minus one, two, four, minus, this is lambda, zero, zero, lambda. Okay, the determinant of this is going to be equal to zero. Well, you can subtract this matrices now because they have the same dimension. Remember, you can only subtract when the dimensions are the same. So we're going to subtract and you subtract corresponding entries. So the determinant of this matrix, one minus lambda is the first entry here. And here it's going to be negative one minus zero is just minus one. And this is going to be two minus zero, that's two. And this is four minus lambda, that's four minus lambda. So this determinant has to be equal to zero. How do you compute the determinant of a matrix again? Well, you multiply these two entries and subtract these two. So let's do it. So it's going to be this times this, which is 1 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus 2 times minus 1. That's going to be minus 2. Minus minus 2 will be plus 2 equals zero. Let's clean up. Can we distribute this? Yes. If you distribute this, you'll end up with lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 4 plus 2 equals 0. So, see what we've got. We're going to end up with a quadratic equation. Why would it be quadratic? Well, it's going to be a polynomial of degree 2. Why would it be of degree 2? Because this is a 2 by 2 matrix. So whenever you have an n by n matrix, you're going to have a polynomial of degree n if this is a square matrix. Okay? We're going to talk about other things in the future because it gets more complicated if you do um, more advanced um, linear algebra or we do numerical analysis. Now, at this point, this is what we have. If we clean this up, this is lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 equals 0. So we've got lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 equals 0. Well, this is a very common quadratic equation. We know that if we solve this, we're going to get x equals 2 or x equals 3, right? Or not x, lambda. Okay, so we have lambda equals 2 or lambda equals 3. These two lambdas are the eigenvalues it is very straightforward. What I showed you at the beginning was the justification for this equation. You don't need to show any of these when you do the calculation. All you have to do is, whenever they give you a matrix like this, okay, just subtract lambda from here, subtract lambda from here. 
that's all you need and take the determinant of the resulting matrix equated to zero solve the quadratic you get your eigenvalues okay i explained to you why we had to do this it's because of the theory the definitions that's what led us to this so now that we have the eigenvalues all we need are the eigenvectors in other videos i'm going to show you the applications and the usefulness of these guys they save lives i tell you okay because when the going gets tough the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors just get going now we have our two eigenvalues we need to find the eigenvectors because remember this equation is not complete we already know what a is and now we found two values for our eigenvalues right we just need to know what the eigenvector will be for each of them so each eigenvalue has its own eigenvector that's why i labeled them lambda one and v1 so this is going to go with this and this is going to go with this there are times where these two are the same that's a special situation there are times where they share the same eigenvalue there are times where the eigenvectors are the same well those are special situations but let's just take the normal situation that that is normally expected okay so how do we find the eigenvalues you go back to this equation remember what we said that a minus lambda i will always be multiplied by v and the answer is supposed to be zero yes we don't know what v is so this is the setting we're going to have we're going to say that a minus lambda i let's do lambda 1i multiplied by v will be equal to zero so let's plug stuff in what is a this is a a is I'm going to write a lot this time. So it's going to be 1 minus 1, 2, 4. This is a matrix. We're going to be subtracting. Now you see our lambda 1 is 2. So 2 times the, um, the identity matrix is just going to be, you're going to have 2 here, 0, 2. I don't want to write the identity matrix separately anymore. So this is what you are actually subtracting, right? We're multiplying this matrix that we're gonna get by V from this formula, but we don't know what V is, so let's just represent V as a column matrix, okay? It's usually gonna be, let's call this X1, call this X2. This is our eigenvector. We just need to know what X1 is and what X2 is, and we'll be fine, okay? And on the right-hand side, we're gonna get zero. This is how to represent this as zero, okay? And that's what you have. So let's do our calculation. If you subtract this from this, it is basically you subtracting two from this and from this. Remember that was a formula we had that we solved the equation with. So here, we're gonna go here and say that this is, the second time I do this, I'm not gonna go through this process. I'm just justifying the shortcut I'm gonna use in the second part. So this is gonna be one minus two, that's gonna be minus one, and minus one minus zero. So I have this, multiplied by x1, x2, and what I get here is this. Okay, so now we need to solve this equation, but this is easy. This is super easy. What do we do? Multiply row by column. This multiplied, oh, observation. Did you notice that this is a multiple of this, right? You can just multiply this by negative two, you're gonna get this. Multiply this by negative two, you get this. So if you really, really wanna get non-zero eigenvectors, that when these things actually exist and they are nice, this is the kind of answer you want. The two rows must give you the same exact thing. If they're not the same, there's trouble lurking around. They have to be the same, okay? So this is nice. Now, what do you do? Use this row to multiply this, what do you get? Just take one of them, because both of them will give you the same result. Let's not waste time. So you're gonna have this. So what you have is minus one times x1 is minus x1, minus one times x2 is minus x2, and the answer on the right-hand side is gonna be equal to zero. So you've got an equation, okay? So 
If you do the same thing here, you'll get the exact same thing. It's just this would be two and you, you get rid of one of them and you still end up with this equation. Okay, let me just write it. So you end up with 2x1 minus, sorry, plus 2x2 equals zero. You see? If you do elimination, you end up with something like, so I'm just gonna strike this out, okay? Not necessary. And then what does this tell me? It means I can move this to the other side. This implies that negative x1 is equal to x2. Mm. Now, this is my recommendation. What you're saying is, if I make this one, my x1, one, what will x2 be? x2 will be minus one. So you can say that v, now there's so, some professors are very strict with this, okay? But this is what I will tell you. Be able to recognize your eigenvector. Just say, my eigenvector will be that vector that's standing like this, where if my x1, if I make my x1, one, what will my x2 be? My x2 will be minus x1. What is x1? One. Minus x1 will be minus one. That is eigenvector one. V1, this guy is this guy. You know what? I'm going to leave the other one for you to do. I'm just gonna verify that this is true. Remember the original claim that we made. We made a claim that if you have an eigenvector and you multiply it from the left with a matrix, you don't have to use the matrix to multiply it. You can just multiply it by a single number and the two sides will be the same. So we're gonna test it saying, instead of multiplying this eigenvector by this matrix, we're just gonna multiply it by two and see if we're gonna get the same answer. If that is true, I would let you also use this, follow the same exact process and find the eigenvector for the second eigenvalue and then see if you're gonna get your answer correctly. Let's verify this. Let's end the video. So I'm going to say A times V1, which is um, one, minus one, two, four, multiplied by V1, which is one times minus one. I'm gonna say that this is equal to, with a question mark, what is my lambda one? It's two times, what is V1? V1 is one and minus one. Well, let's see. The right-hand side is supposed to be two times one and two times minus one. So this vector here should be two and minus 2. Well, we better get the same answer on the left-hand side. Well, let's go. If we do the multiplication, 1 minus 1 times this, it's going to be 1 times 1 plus minus 1 times minus 1. So that's 1 plus 1. That's 2. Ooh, the first step is correct, ladies and gentlemen. We got 2. Then let's do the multiplication. This multiplied by this, so this is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 4 times minus 1, that's minus 4. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Do you see that both are the same? This is justified because we accurately computed the eigenvalue and found the correct eigenvector for the first one. The second one, we already have the eigenvalue. I need you to tell me what the eigenvector is. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.